All right, it's 512. We're listening to the Shardcast. Let's finish these flayed ones. Welcome to my hobby desk. Let's finish off these flayed ones. We're going to start by washing everything with Army Painter Strong Tone. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. We're going to hit all the metal and all the skin with this because we are speed painting. We just want to get these guys on the table and we're just going to be very liberal with our approach. I am working over each individual area of the miniature and I'm trying to finish one area before I move on to the next because if the wash dries and then you come back and agitate it with the brush while it is drying, that's how you get those nasty tide marks. So I'm trying to avoid those. Um, I'm a little tired though, so I lose focus sometimes and jump around, but we're just gonna try to layer this on everywhere, including the skin. make sure I get into all these details on the axe. It had quite a bit on its own and when they added the crackle paint, it added some more details and crevices. So we wanna make sure we get a really good layer on here. That's it for the wash. And now we're just gonna let these guys dry for basically forever. And then we're gonna come back and grab our riser rust and we're gonna do some dry brushing. Riser rust, dry paint from Citadel for doing rust. So we're gonna get our synthetic flat brush. We're going to get a little bit of this on here. We're gonna rub most of it off on the paper towel and we're gonna dry brush these guys. We're gonna do two passes. We're gonna do all over the metal, avoiding the skin. And after we do that on everybody, we're gonna go back and do a second pass where we hit the areas where there's extra texture paint so that that uh, texture will grab on. Through the magic of editing, it looks like I did all this with one application of riser rust to the brush, but I actually went back and reapplied it to the brush between each model. And so each model pretty much got one shot of the rust, then I went back and got some more, rubbed off in the paper towel, moved on to the next model. knock this guy's axe off a little bit, which means uh, when my son breaks this in about 48 hours, I'll probably end up gluing that back on. We're gonna do a second pass through, and this time we're gonna focus on the areas where the Vallejo texture paste was, and it's uh, got extra texture, which will grip the dry brushing a little bit more and have these real intense rusty spots on all of them. The Agrelin Earth uh, technical paint came out well on the shoulders and on the axe too, so I'm going to be hitting that extra 
because it has all the little grooves and everything. We're gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna hit him with a matte varnish and I have the day off today. So in a couple of hours, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna sneak in some more hobbying. Blood for the blood god. So I've used this a little bit on some weapons, um, but this is the first time I've tried to like apply it on a model. So what I'm gonna do is put on my palette. I'm gonna use my regular palette because I don't think you're supposed to water this down. And I'm just gonna paint it in with a detail brush where it, any place where you have two pieces of skin that are kind of touching really close to one another and any pronounced recesses so in between the wrappings where i want to distinguish like one piece of skin from another one around the ridges up on the head uh, a little bit on the axe i'm going to do this for everybody and then i'm going to come back and then reapply it on all the weapons So on the ghillie suit guy, I'm going to use this to try to break up the different pieces of skin that are layered on. So again, anywhere where it looks like there's two pieces laying next to each other or a pronounced recess, I'm just going to paint this into that recess. And I'm even going to do a little bit of kind of edge highlighting along the tatters and trying to give a little more um, contrast so when you look at it, it doesn't look like just this big jumble of flesh stuff, but there's some natural dividing lines. For loincloth, man, we're going to, again, do in between the wrappings on the ax hand but we're gonna almost kind of edge highlight along the pieces of skin, especially where they're crisscrossing one another. All right, for Leatherface here, we're mostly doing like an edge highlight around. I'm also gonna do some on the back of the head where we'll be attaching to his skull. And I'm gonna do some on his chest like it was dripping down off the mask and it was covering the front of him. I might hit that back when I do the weapons. All right, weapons. I'm gonna just brush it along the edge in such a way that it would be like if when the weapon was hitting somebody, the way the blood would go, except for this ax where I'm just gonna get it kind of all over the top, just like he's just smashing it into people and try to get a little bit of it like it was running down. So here on the knife guy again from the blade, I'm gonna go from the blade into the interior of the knife and then try to get it a little bit like he was stabbing also. Gotta make sure I get both sides of the blade. I'm gonna do a little bit in the back, mostly in the front, like he was slashing down, and I'm gonna drip a little bit of it on his head so that since he's holding the blade above his head, like it might come down a little bit. We're gonna do basically the same thing on this last guy, and I think this is where I hit it on the chest as well as if it was dripping down his face mask. And there we go, four Necron Warriors turned into four Necron Flayed Ones for my son's kill team. Uh, these guys were just a lot of fun to do. I really enjoyed it, kind of uh, going off the beaten path a little bit, and uh, I'm really happy. I might even borrow them, play some Necrons myself. If you hobbied today and you made a video, please throw it in the comments below so I could take a look at it. And until then, 
as always, have a great one.